Well, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk. This is Laughing Boy, and here with me again is Nintendo Capri Sun. And we're back with another episode. Um, on the last episode, we we still were talking about editing and well, just recording in general. Today, we're going to talk about editing. Sounds good. Okay. So the first question I've got: What uh, editing software do you use for your audio commentary? Nothing. I pretty much just put the file straight up into Sony Vegas as it is. Nice. Uh, now, you are part of a multi-person channel, The Runaway Guys. Ah, that is correct. But I I guess you don't really do the editing for that, do you? No, I do not. Has whoever edits the videos, have they mentioned anything about how audio commentary would change? With, uh... Like, with one one microphone, four guys? Well, these days we actually have a multi-microphone setup. So we each have a mic now. Yeah. Oh, that's... So that that definitely complicates things. I've heard a few things about it, but, like, because, like, if the microphone peaks, that's actually an issue to them, whereas to me it's like, oh, well, I'll just, (laughs) you know, slash it and bring the volume level down a little bit on it, but that's about all I'll do. So maybe they do the same thing, I don't know. But. It's not the end of the world if it peaks, but it does yeah. kind of bring down the quality for that moment. It's probably the least concern, though. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so what program do you use to edit your video? Video is pretty much the same thing. I just put it straight up into Sony, Sony Vegas, and render my ass off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I realized I was asking a question that was already been answered. That's cool, though. Nah, I'll do it we all like the time. We like to be thorough here. <laughs> in the dungeon. Sorry, spend your days in the dungeon. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know where you heard that one. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Can you kind of... Do you use any presets, maybe video settings, um, while you're recording? Or, I'm sorry, while you're editing an episode? Um... In Sony Vegas, I pretty much, well, more recently I've actually started to use um, 1280 by 720 as my, uh, oh, whatever it's called. <laughs> Your ratio. My resolution, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Because up until then, I was using like 856 by 480 for a while, and then I switched right. to 1280 by 720. I don't know if it shows or not really, but, because <laughs> um, I, can't, I can personally can't really tell the difference when I look at it. But I, whatever. <laughs> I guess it largely depends, uh, and this is what I was actually going to go into right now, with retro footage or, or games that naturally do 4x3 have, are starting to get stretched, like forcibly stretched, maybe? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, do you stretch out any footage for your 4x3 stuff? I used to. <laughs> But a lot of people complained about it, and I was surprised. But at the same time, now, like now, it would be pretty awkward for me to watch a video that was stretched like that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't stretch them. Anymore. I mean, sometimes. Well, that's the weird thing, because it's like I don't always leave them as they are. Sometimes <laughs> it's weird because sometimes I'll find myself in a situation where I want to put a background on the video. Yeah. But. Uh, but I don't want there to be like any black bars because that's the whole point of putting a background is to bring take the black bars out. But the way I record actually includes the black bars in the video, so I have to crop the black bars out and then like you know, set that video on top of the background. But sometimes in the process of cropping the black bars, I end up changing the size of it. I don't know why. I don't remember why, but uh, it does make it a little bit difficult. Well, yeah, I, I, actually, I do know why, because the only way I know how to do it is to turn off maintain aspect ratio, otherwise it, it's oh. weird. Otherwise it starts cropping the wrong parts of the video. Yeah, uh, from my experience with Premiere, there is a cropping, just like, edit feature, and it just kind of takes a percentage. Like, you can just drag uh, the counter for the left side, the top, the bottom. It's, ah. it's a nice... Uh, I'm not, like, trying to compare... But I am just kind of putting it out there for people that want to know. Yeah, that's good to know, though. Yeah. Uh, the, there is an editing feature for cropping 
like the extra bars out, which is what you'll have to do often for a lot of retro games that will include uh, black sides, black tops and bottoms. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you you do use a background sometimes. Have you? I don't remember all the time though. Yeah, it's not until pretty recently I started. I think Dragon Warrior was one of the first where I realized I liked doing it. So I did it yeah. more with games like Jackal. Had the little Jeep in the background, and then... Yes. Uh, there was one other one I forget offhand. I did actually want to make a comment on the Dragon Warrior one, because I really liked it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I liked it too, actually. Yeah. I'm a huge Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior fan, so... It's even cool that you that you actually played it too. Yeah. I played part of two and three, but I never finished them, so that would be possibly another Ape at Summer game, maybe, but they're kinda long though. Plus if you're editing out random battles, which is one of the, you know, pain in the ass parts of doing an RPG. You never know how long your video is. If I ever got to talk to H C Bailey, I would definitely ask him how he does that. Or how he picks and chooses. Yeah, well, it's pretty standardly, like, what we do is just anytime you come to a new enemy that you haven't seen before, you show it. But anytime you're fighting something you've seen already, uh, unless you have something new to introduce, like a new strategy, then you just cut it out. Yeah. That must kind of suck for a live commentary, though, if you have a thought and it gets interrupted. Yes! Oh, God, does it ever. <laughs> yeah, especially when it's like you, you have a random encounter, you come out of it, you start talking, you take five steps, you hit another one. It's like... Do you usually just, in that case, leave it in, or...? Ah, uh, there, yeah, there, well, actually, there have been times I've cut that entire section out, so that... Yeah, so it looks like I got in a random battle and warped five steps ahead. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> and that works. Yeah, people get the idea, generally, of what you're doing, anyway. They don't care. Yeah, especially much. with especially with random encounter games. It's a lot more difficult to, to do that live commentary, especially even if you're just doing a walkthrough style where you're explaining every minute detail. That's one of my favorite moments from Earthbound comes to mind when I was in the cave with, like, when you were alone with Jeff at the beginning, I was going through the cave, and every time I came back from a random battle, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm back, but I can never finish my sentence. So it would always be, like, me coming back and saying, oh, okay, beep. And I'm like, oh, okay, beep. Oh, never mind. You know what? I just won't talk. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like, if you wouldn't spend so much time on the O and OK, maybe you could say something, but also there, oh, it's just so dumb. It's not gonna matter. It won't yep. matter. Any Pokemon cave, just screw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So, I kind of want to go into, back to this DS stuff. How would you deal with 3DS footage? Or DS footage? Um... You mean like DS as opposed to 3DS? Um, kind of. It's one and the same. Well, it yeah. does. Things do change. Um, you have to kind of stretch out or shrink one screen depending on the aspect ratio. Oh, of the you know top what? Yeah, that, now that you bring that up, that actually has been uh, something I didn't notice before. And in, in this particular Phoenix Wright game, I get black bars I have to crop out on the top screen, whereas I didn't in Justice for All. So I don't know. Yeah. Because most of my DS games, I play them on my 3DS, so it's kind of the same difference, but... Yep. I, I guess some of them do have, like, bars you have to crop out, though, if you want the, you know, optimal effect or whatever. And, um, kind of... Well, I guess what I was going with... And I'll show this on the screen, although you won't see it. Okay. <laughs> because this, does this do you? So, one of the things I noticed, you have your uh, Link to the Past LP. Or, I'm sorry, Link Between Worlds LP where you have the top screen, the bottom screen, and you have a background image. Yeah. And I think you have it so that the background is filling up. Like, you can actually see the background on the edges of the screen as, as well. And then you have the top screen uh, kind of not centered, but it's not exactly on the edge of the screen. Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Mm -hmm. And kind of the same thing with the bottom screen. Yeah. But then you have um, your Pokemon or as let's play where you also contain your team i kind of actually i'll diverge a little bit how did you do that where you have your team oh. on the side with the moving sprites oh yeah um <laughs> that's actually a lot more of a pain in the ass than it might look the actual <laughs> background like what's behind 
the name and the sprite. I made that in MS Paint because I don't know how to use Photoshop. I don't have it yet. Yeah. And I'm going to need to get it pretty soon for reasons we'll get into later. But, huh. but yeah, I, <laughs> I made that in MS Paint. I just basically I uh, downloaded an image of Hoenn, the overworld, like a, a fancy image of it. Yeah. And just kind of pasted that six times up in the top right corner and used that for my background. Then I had to insert text for each of the names and each of the levels. Well, yep. the names and the level are basically one text file. So that way, each time they gain a level, I just change it to the next number. Yep. But, uh... And then, like, the, um... The anime... Basically, the, the Pokemon are, like, little animated GIFs that I got off of Pokecenter.com, I think. Oh, really? I remember. There, there's a site. Oh, you know what? I might have it in my bookmarks here. Ooh. www.pokestadium.com That's where I got Stadium. it. Okay, I'll yeah. post that in the description for anybody who wants to make an, a Pokemon yeah. LP. Definitely so you can look check up that any out. Pokemon there. You can see all the sprites from all the different games. Some of the sprites that I used aren't necessarily from Sapphire. Like I've used some of the black and white ones. I've used just whichever one looks the coolest. Ah, okay. I didn't notice that actually. Yeah. Um, well, there are some that's like I've had a problem where the animation they'll leave a trail behind as they animate. Oof. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's no, I, I like, can imagine it. Kind of like a comet leaves a trail behind. They would do it, that when they animate. Yeah. So sometimes I had to use ones that didn't have as many frames of animation, just so it wouldn't do that. Hmm. Because otherwise some of them might look a little more fancy, but whatever. They're so and small, I guess... nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not terribly noticeable. Yeah, it's not that cool. big of a deal. That's good. It's... But uh, I guess in editor speak, these are... Each Pokemon is basically its own layer, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's just done all the way through the entire episode. That's right. Each Pokemon and then each name is its own level, too. Or yeah. Layer. Yep. And I guess I'm going to assume that's probably, like, the biggest, most time-consuming editing process you've ever had to do. It is. I've gotten better at it, though, so that's, that's good. Yeah, It doesn't take as long good. now. I have, like... I have it all pre all the presets saved, so I can kind of just bring it up, and all I have to do is drag the video into it and, and do whatever I gotta do to set it up. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Like, I guess I could imagine it, but you must have had to do a lot of prepping for this. Yeah, well, I don't know. Not not so much in terms of like playing the game itself, because that's well, that's yeah. the easy part. <laughs> as bad as I am at it, but, but getting the resources. Yeah, yeah, that took that took some time. But I basically anything that I downloaded for that particular project, I would put in one specific folder on my desktop, so I always know where it is. <laughs> and if I ever need to import it for any reason, I know where it is. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's. I'm glad I got through with that, or I, I we got these questions out. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I might have to try that. So. HD copy protection. I'm not sure if you've had to undergo a lot of issues with these. Have you ever had an issue where you couldn't record footage from a system because of copy protection? Uh, actually, yeah. My uh, PS3? Or, no. <clears throat> is it my... It's it probably... My <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. No, I've, I've had it with something. Maybe it is my PS3. The thing is, I played Nino Kuni on it, though. So well, with the Hopig, you or the Paj. Ooh, I know, I know, I know what it is. It's like okay, I can't use HD cables to capture yes. from it. Yeah, that's it. Well, you just said HD copy. You know, yeah. I'm a little slow today. <laughs> so, yeah, so I wanted to record with the HD cable because it looks so, even I can tell the difference when I look yeah. at it on the TV. It is so beautiful. Oh but, yeah. No, with the Hopage, I had or with anything, I guess I had to record with component cables instead. Yeah. Yep, and that does pass through it. Yep. Um, yeah, there are some ways that you can get across the HD copy protection on the PS3. Now it's just an option on the PS4. You can just turn it off. They opened up that option specifically for streamers and Let's Players. Nice. Yeah, I thought that was really cool of them. That was nice of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always makes me feel good to know that game companies are like showing ways of approval for what we do, because... Lord knows Nintendo is extremely ambiguous about it. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, okay, so I think the next thing we're going to talk about is exporting and uploading videos. Mm -hmm. 
kind of like the easy sort of topic, but uh, probably the two most important things I think about any games channel are the quality of the audio and the video, and that can kind of just go away through the editing process for any number of reasons, and I think one of those reasons is just exporting the video. Ah. It, so, would you like to kind of explain the exportation process from Vegas and uh, what term in terms of aspects, bit rate encoding, uh, or like target bit rate file size? What is it that you try to go to to get the highest quality video? Yeah, I'm, I'm so dumb when it comes to this kind of stuff that all I can really do is kind of just read off what I want to format. It says audio 128 kilobytes per second, which is I guess normal. I don't know. 48,000 hertz, 16 bit stereo AAC. This video is 29.97 frames per second, which is also usually, I guess, it's standard. A, yeah. 1280 by 720 progressive, YUV. I have no idea what that means. 2 megabytes per second, that's my bit rate. So I set it to like maximum of 4 million, but it averaged 2 million, so. And I have variable bit rate, so. And then pixel aspect ratio, 1.000. Uh, I didn't really change much of anything else. Is that a, like a, not a custom, but that's that's basically one of the presets? Oh, uh, yeah. I think. Okay. Because, I mean, I, it's been a learning process for me. It'd be, I... I the reason for asking this question would be so it's not so much of a learning process for other newer LPers. Um, yeah, totally. Especially some that may not be very well versed in things like Premiere or Vegas. Oh, I didn't mention it. I also do like my file size is MP4. I don't know what you use, but but MP4 is best for YouTube. So. Yeah, um, I do use MP4. A lot of those I actually. Uh, the variable bit rate that you described is a little different from what I've done. Ah. But, I mean, I'm not saying mine's better. It's not. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but, again, it, it's definitely a learning process. And But the problem is, like, a 30-minute episode can... Or even a 20-minute a episode can take a couple hours to render. Ooh, yeah. Especially on my end. So it's... Yeah, so it takes mine about an hour, maybe 45 minutes to do 20 minutes. Yeah. I, I do. I also do a two pass oh. for variable bit rate. So it's supposed to basically render it twice and then it picks the best frames or something like that. Oh, interesting. Huh. Yeah. Uh, some people swear by it. Others are like, you don't have to do it that way. So <laughs> it really just kind of comes down to a feel. That's cool. And I think, other than ex, uh, uploading to YouTube, you do use YouTube's natural uploader, right? Yeah, sure do. Yeah. And there really isn't... Do you use thumbnails, by the way? No, that's the one thing that I got... That's why I was saying earlier I want to learn Photoshop so I can start making my own. Alright, so I think that wraps it up for tonight's episode. Um, on the next one, we are going to talk about the Runaway Guys. Yay! And then after that, we will talk a little bit more about just kind of your thoughts and feelings about Let's Plays as they are today. So stay tuned, and we will be back um, hopefully before two months. You made a fool of me But the broken dreams have got you 